So Steven Spielberg gives us, within the space of a few months, one Oscar-nominated critical darling with The Post, and one hyperactive juggernaut blockbuster with Ready Player One. I'm getting a little bit of deja vu from 1993, 1994, when he did the same thing with Schindler's List and Jurassic Park, both within a few months of each other. That man is a giver. So, Ready Player One is a fantasy adventure film based off the 2011 novel of the same name by Ernest Cline. Set in 2045, the story follows a young lad called Wade Watts, who's played by Ty Sheridan, and he lives in an almost shantytown part of Columbus, Ohio, in this stacked trailer park. The world has gone to shit because of climate change and overpopulation, but technology has advanced to the point now where people can escape the mundanity of their own lives into this VR world known as the Oasis, which is like a virtual utopian paradise full of pleasure and escapism, and it was designed by this guy called James Halliday, who's played by Mark Rylance. He sadly died five years ago, but before he died, he left this golden Easter egg somewhere within the Oasis, and basically, the person that finds this hidden golden Easter egg will inherit his company and his trillions of dollars. So naturally, everybody is looking for it, but Halliday didn't make this an easy the egg to find because in order to find the egg you have to find these three keys and in order to find just one of those keys you have to complete almost an impossible task to do it. But yeah, there are these professional egg hunters known as gunters who dedicate their whole lives to trying to find this golden easter egg. But it's been five years since Halliday died and no one has even found the first key. Which brings us to Wade Watts who is a massive diehard fan of Halliday and basically makes it his life's mission to find this easter egg. He scours the oasis in the guise of his chosen avatar character who's known as Parsifal along with his cyber friend who he's never met in the real world but is very close with online who's called H and also he gets the help of this mysterious girl called Artemis who's played by Olivia Cook. And together they all try to find this golden easter egg before the greedy corrupt CEO Nolan Sorrento who's played by Ben Mendelsohn does because he just wants to take the Oasis and make it into this, you know, soulless corporate capitalist machine, you know, and basically have ruling controlling power over everyone in the world because everyone is plugged into the Oasis and everyone uses it as a way to enhance their lives. So yeah, they want to use it for evil, and these kids want to basically, you know, take on the man, you know, and take down the evil corporation. It's very Spielberg. Steven Spielberg has become synonymous with the word escapism, okay? The man gave the world E.T., Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, Hook, and Minority Report. And Ready Player One is the very definition of escapism. It's pretty much the main theme of this film, that and wish fulfillment. And there was a lot of hype building for this film because Spielberg has sort of mainly been focusing on more war sort of films or political thrillers, stuff like that as of late. But yeah, this is going to be like his return to, you know, childlike fantasy, escapism, you know, just the fun side of Spielberg, the stuff that we grew up with and associate with when we think of Spielberg, you know? The question is, does he deliver? And I will say this, I was thoroughly entertained from start to finish with this film. But there are a few problems. I wouldn't say it's his best work, but it is such a good ride watching this. But then again, this is a movie for geeks, and me being a massive geek, I am the prime target market. So yeah, it did a good job of appealing to me. I don't know if everyone will love this film, but it certainly is a shitload of fun watching. The concept for this film is great. It's quite timely considering the recent sort of prominent rise of VR technology that we're seeing more and more of in culture. The core of this film is about wish fulfillment and the VR technology in Ready Player One gives the characters the freedom to step into the shoes of whoever they wish to be. So for us as audience members, that's very cool because it makes us think maybe one day we can basically step into the digital shoes of whoever it is that we want to be. But despite the technology giving us a glimpse into what could be our potential future, Spielberg doesn't actually have too much to say in this film. He's merely just providing us with a means to feel like a child again, you know? to get absorbed in that panoramic world of imagination. There's not much of a message you take away from watching this film other than there's joy to be had, you know, in the physical world as well as the cyber world, but most people already know that going into this, so yeah, the message isn't exactly profound, but you still have a blast watching it. And there's another problem that Ready Player One does suffer from, and that is that it does feel a little bit shallow. Most of this film is set in the Oasis, this expansive, awe-inspiring world which is pretty much limitless. Spielberg successfully demonstrates the grandeur and spectacle of getting you into the Oasis. He makes you definitely want to go there and experience it for yourself. But because the world is so, so vast, he has to zip through it at breakneck speed. So 
other elements of the film sort of do suffer in a sense. For example, the characters don't feel very well explored. Apart from Wade and Artemis, there isn't very much backstory on any of the supporting characters. They feel more like stock characters, and they don't get much in terms of development over the duration of the narrative. So Artemis feels like a love interest. Sorrento feels like, you know, greedy corporate sleazeball, you know, and he's a bit one-noted. H starts off as the comic relief sidekick, but when H and Wade meet in the real world, the character then gets sidelined to basically just a truck driver. And then there's these two other characters, which Wade becomes friends with online and then in the real world, but I can't for the life of me remember their names, and yeah, they're just sort of along for the ride. So yeah, they don't really have much to do, even though the five of them collectively are known as the High Five. Yeah. <laughs> It's cute, but you only really get to know two out of the five of them, so yeah, the other three just feel like spare parts. And because there's so much emphasis on world building, some of the film's more emotional moments lack impact. The romance between Artemis and Parsifal feels rushed and forced. Both of the actors are terrific in their roles, particularly Olivia Cook, but there's no time for the chemistry to develop organically. It's just, boom, you guys are into each other, okay? And some of the dialogue that they're given, particularly from Wade Watts' character, is cringe-inducing. And I'm verging on spoiler territory here, but there is a notable character death in this film. I won't say who it is, but when they're killed off, it's like they're forgotten about almost instantly, and the character that was quite close to them doesn't really get much time to grieve. It might give that character more of a reason to seek justice or revenge for this person who just died, but yeah, it just kind of like fizzles out. It doesn't really become a moment or anything. It's just like, Oh, they died. That's it. Okay. So yeah, I didn't really feel the weight of the loss of this character. Spielberg doesn't have a problem with these characters being likeable. They're all very likeable, even Ben Mendelsohn as the villain Sorrento. But the problem is the characters aren't that memorable, so they feel more like stock characters than characters you want to root for. If you want an example of Steven Spielberg getting the balance of character exploration with spectacle just right, then watch Jurassic Park, okay? That film was all about jaw-dropping special effects, but all the characters were extremely well-crafted. You felt attached to all those characters, and the relationships between them developed organically as the movie went on, whereas Ready Player One's characters lack an emotional attachment to. But where Spielberg shines in this film is his set pieces and action sequences. There's a racetrack scene which features a cameo from a T-Rex and King Kong, and all the way through it, I was like this in the cinema. I was like, <laughs> just constantly gawking, like, <gasps> God. And another one of the key challenges involves a masterful tribute to the film The Shining. Kubrick would have been proud of Spielberg for pulling off this very playful yet chilling homage. And the final battle between all the gamers and the IOI Corporation has more Easter eggs than you can possibly count. You can watch this film a hundred times and pause literally every frame of the film and still probably not catch all the references, nods, and winks to pop culture. I think some people will adore the fact that it's saturated with pop culture references because, yeah, who doesn't love a little bit of 80s nostalgia? But there are also others that might find this dependency on referencing all these characters and stuff from like movies, TVs, and games quite tiresome. There's an argument to be made that by borrowing characters and stuff from other beloved films, TV, and games, that it detracts from this film's own sense of individuality. It's almost like Spielberg is relying massively on fan service. It makes you think, are we liking Ready Player One for itself? Or are we just liking it because it's pandering to our sense of nostalgia for stuff that we've loved in the past? For me, I wasn't bothered by all of these Easter eggs because the entire film is about trying to find an Easter egg. So it reflects the content of the narrative. It can be a little overdone in places, like the bits with the Iron Giant or Chucky spring to mind, but it never got to the point where it bothered me. Plus the whole sequence with The Shining just had me fanboy. Like when the characters were wandering into certain rooms of the hotel, just like, oh God, what are they gonna do here? What are they gonna do here? <laughs> but. I just had so much fun watching that scene. So guys, to conclude, Ready Player One was probably my most anticipated film of 2018, and it delivered exactly what I wanted it to. An exhilarating escape from reality. Popcorn fun! This is Spielberg having fun on Overdrive. It does have a few issues with its script, particularly providing us with any meaningful character development, but Spielberg has made a movie for movie lovers, dreamers, and geeks. It's not got much to say, but you will have a great time watching it. Let's ask those three questions. Would I watch this again? Yes, I just want to watch this again merely so I can see how many pop culture references I can get on a second viewing. I'm sure I must have missed like 200 references that just went straight by me because there's so much going on the screen at any given point. Would I recommend that you guys watch this? Certainly. This is a film that was made for the big screen, okay? 
you will not get the same experience watching this on your home TV or an iPad, okay? Go watch it in a cinema, okay guys? It's totally worth it. And what score am I gonna give it out of 10? Well, it does have its faults, but this film is so hard to dislike. So I'm gonna give Ready Player One a seven out of 10. And my quick question for you guys today is, what is your favorite Steven Spielberg film? For me, I don't think anything is ever gonna top Jurassic Park, but I would love to know, what is your favorite Spielberg movie, okay? Big catalog of work, and I'm sure everybody has a different response, okay? Whatever you think, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. And if you do like these videos, please don't forget to click that subscribe button. Go on, you know you want to. Thanks so much for watching, guys. For more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.